think that one of the things that all the artists of this evening have is a very strong grounding in the classical um, Indian or an Indian form, whether it's classical or not. So the, it just happens to be classical in this, um, in this scenario. And all three of the artists present work both in this classical forum within the traditional um, constraint, well, within the constraints of what we perceive as a traditional um, uh, idea of presentation. And they all also collaborate and perform in um, collaborative work, which may not be as uh, traditional or presented in the traditional format of performance. And all the artists of our evening have uh, danced and presented both traditional and collaborative, maybe contemporary or um, explorative work to both Indian and Western audiences. So there is something that uh, holds them to this um, idea of this Indian art and still they continue to work and explore other ideas without limiting themselves to this idea of what people perceive as the ends of tradition. I think uh, the instrument I play, which is the sitar, has uh, become an icon for, for uh, Indian classical uh, music, for sure. And even for Indian classical culture, I think, the, you know, you will see there are umpteen examples of uh, uh, the sitar as an icon. I mean, literally as an icon, you click an image of the sitar and it takes you into the world of Indian culture or whatever. Um, thanks to the efforts of people like Pandit Ravi Shankarji or Pandit Nikhil Banerjee or, or Ustad Dilad Khan Sahib or Ustad Ali Khan Sahib. Despite being not Indian in the literal sense, I, I wasn't born there and I didn't grow up in India. There is an Indianness in me through my dance forms, which I, I cannot separate from who I am. And so having been predisposed to these art forms, the ideology, the ethos from a young age, it's is the strongest aspect of my artistic expression, even though I've learned other forms of uh, performing. And so because it is the most, the, the strongest and the most visible aspect of my performing arts, it is the easiest tool, uh, to, the easiest skill to extract out of me for choreographers to work with. Sometimes we worry about uh, Abhinay pieces because we feel like they're based on mythological tales or, you know, characters of the mostly Hindu tradition and are they going to uh, understand or what's the response going to be like? But in my experience, what I have realized is that uh, people perceive the content that we present differently. That is for sure. The way I present an Abhinay, the way it will be perceived in a Sabha or a, a Kateri in Chennai will be very different from the way it will be perceived abroad, for sure. But having said that, uh, we cannot... Uh, underestimate the audience and say that, uh, you know, oh, they're not going to follow this, so let's not do it for them. Because I have realized over the years that uh, a broad audience perceives Abhinay beautifully. I mean, sometimes they are in tears and they come to us after the performance. And it's such a moving experience to see that uh, energy exchange with people who have actually absolutely no idea about who Krishna or Radha is. And that's where, you know, it really... Uh, reaffirms your belief uh, in the idea of the universal, uh, un you know, the universal nature of uh, the stories that we present.